Hey there, boys and girls. The last time we left off, we were talking about how George Washington tried to warn the country about the dangers of rival political parties. Today, we look at who those parties were, why they developed, and what they disagreed on. We begin with the group that became known as the Federalists. The Federalists, chief among them was Secretary of Treasury Alexander Hamilton, believed in having a stronger federal government, as their name would suggest. Federalists adhered to what is known as a loose construction theory of the Constitution, which means they believe that the federal government should be free to make any laws it feels is necessary unless that law is specifically forbidden in the Constitution. One of the first controversial issues to come up was the financial plan proposed by Alexander Hamilton. As Secretary of the Treasury, Hamilton wanted to get the nation's finances in order, and there were a lot of problems. The nation and many states were still in debt, and former Revolutionary War soldiers still had not been paid in full for their service, and there was no clear plan for taxation. Hamilton's sweeping plan tried to address all of that. The first part of the plan was to have the federal government assume or take over all the various state debt. That would mean that all of the states would now be responsible for everybody's national debt. Another aspect of Hamilton's plan was to implement tariffs on foreign goods. Tariffs are taxes that are placed on imported goods. They give the federal government some revenue or income, but more importantly, the goal of tariffs is to help domestic manufacturers compete with cheaper foreign goods. Tariffs were viewed as something that benefited northern manufacturing interests at the expense of southern planters. The most controversial part of Hamilton's plan, however, was the establishment of a national bank. Hamilton wanted the bank as a way to stabilize the nation's finances and perhaps have the federal government give out loans and establish credit. The problem was that the Constitution did not specifically say that the federal government could establish a national bank. However, the Constitution also does not say that the federal government cannot establish a national bank. Hamilton and the Federalists applied a loose view of the Constitution. According to Hamilton, the National Bank was constitutional because of the Elastic Clause. He and the Federalists believed that the National Bank was both necessary and proper. In the opposite aisle were the Democratic Republicans. Chief among them was Thomas Jefferson. Democratic Republicans were suspicious of a strong federal government. They wanted more power to remain with the individual states. They believed in strict construction of the Constitution because they believed that the federal government should be strictly limited to the Constitution. In other words, they believed the federal government should not be allowed to do anything unless it is specifically written into the Constitution. This limits federal power. Democratic Republicans were very much opposed to Hamilton's economic plan, especially the creation of the National Bank. They argued that the Constitution did not give that authority to the federal government. They viewed the Federalists as the party that would favor rich financial interests over those of independent farmers. There were other issues regarding immigration, foreign policy, and a potential war with either Britain or France that also divided the parties. The main issue, however, was the division of power between the federal and state governments. Federalists wanted the balance of power to remain with the federal government, while Democratic Republicans felt more sovereignty should remain with the states. That's all for now. Next time, we talk about the Alien and Sedition Acts, and it has nothing to do with E.T. Haha, <laughs> get it? Until next time, have a good evening.